Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. The term one sheet wonder means one piece of designer series paper or cardstock created into multiple cards. And today we're gonna to do just that using a one piece of six by six designer series paper. Although my cards have a holiday theme, this pattern's gonna work well with any designer series paper for cards of any occasion. I'm gonna be cutting the designer paper right along with you so you can see how it's done. And I'm gonna be creating one of the four cards in today's video, but I'll be sharing all of them. So make sure you hang with me to the end. If you're looking for the pattern for today's One Sheet Wonder, it will be down in the video description below if you are here visiting from YouTube. Make sure you click on the words show more so that you can see all the description. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, I would love to have you subscribe. Click the subscribe button down below and make sure you click that small bell icon so that you'll receive notifications when I'm live here on YouTube, as well as when I upload a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's project. The designer series paper that I chose is double-sided and it comes from the package called Night Before Christmas. This is gonna be found in the Stampin' Up! Holiday Catalog. Again, as I said in the introduction, you can use any designer series paper and this one sheet wonder layout is going to be great for any card for any occasion. The very first piece that we're gonna cut is a three quarter inch strip. I'm gonna open up my trimmer and I'm gonna line this up at the three quarter inch mark here and I'm gonna slice across the entire bottom. So this is three quarters of an inch by six and we'll set that aside. I'm gonna rotate this now and I'm gonna cut this at two inches, which is gonna leave me a remaining four inch piece. I'll set the two inch piece aside. And this piece here, I chose to do an angled cut. It's not important that you make it exactly like mine, but just to give you an idea, I did measure one and a half inches up on this side and two and three quarters inch down on this side. I found the easiest way to do that was using one of the Stampin' Up! grid papers. Now, these are one of the small ones and I absolutely love that. So I'm gonna lay my designer series paper here in the corner and you're gonna see that there's a ruler on both sides. It actually starts with the one here at the top. So I'm gonna work just a little bit backwards. That's easy. So at seven inches, one and a half would be here. At five and a half inches, I'm gonna make a small tick mark here with the pencil. I'm gonna slide that grid sheet down and I'm gonna line up the designer series paper here now at the top. And this time I know I want a tick mark down at two and three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna look here for two and three quarters of an inch and I'm just gonna visually follow it along. The great thing about the grid paper is there's actually a grid line for every half inch, which is gonna make it easy for me to follow. Now I know that those little tick marks are gonna be really difficult for you to see here in the video, but let me line it up in the trimmer to make it easier for you. I've opened up the trimmer arm and I'm going to navigate the one tick line here inside my cutting track and the other one here down at the bottom. So all I'm looking is to make sure that my blade is going to follow right down this track. Once I'm confident with that cut, I'll go ahead and I'll slice. And that's going to leave me with two separate pieces. This now leaves us with a total of four pieces to make four different cards. I have a piece here of Whisper White cardstock. This measures four by five and a quarter. You're gonna find all the cutting dimensions down in a link below the video description if you are here from YouTube. Remember this angled piece? This is going to get mounted near the bottom. I did choose to leave a little bit of white space showing. I love to use my silicone craft sheet when I'm adding adhesive, especially to these little thin corners. So I'm gonna flip this over to the wrong side and I'm gonna add adhesive around the perimeter. The great thing about the silicone craft sheet is it's going to keep my work surface nice and clean. So any adhesive that would happen to fall here simply rubs right off, nothing will stick to it. Liquid glue and hot glue work beautifully on here as well. I'm gonna line this up near the bottom and I'm gonna leave a small margin of that white cardstock showing and then I'll just adhere that in place. I'm gonna flip this piece over and I'm gonna add adhesive to the back side to ready this for my card base. This is a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock. I did score it in half right before you joined me. I'm gonna use my bone folder for that nice crisp edge. And then I'm going to adhere this to the front of my card base. I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna bring in a small piece of old olive cardstock. This measures a half an inch by three and a half inches. I chose to do a little bit of heat embossing. I'm gonna be using the embossing buddy, so I'm gonna lightly rub that across my cardstock. 
that's going to prepare the surface for heat embossing and it's going to tell the embossing powder not to stick where I don't place ink. I've got my Versamark ink pad here and I've mounted the greeting that says blessed Christmas wishes. This comes from the stamp set called Itty Bitty Christmas. Lots and lots of fun greetings for both the outside and the inside of your cards. You'll be able to find this stamp set also in the Stampin' Up! holiday catalog. Now if you don't already have a demonstrator and you're interested in receiving a complimentary copy of the holiday catalog and or the annual catalog, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on contact me. I'll go ahead and ink that up in my Versamark ink and I'm going to stamp that here in the center. I've got my silver embossing powder all ready to go and I'm gonna sprinkle that generously. I like to work over a coffee filter so any excess is gonna be caught inside of there and then I can pinch this and pour it right back in the bottle so that there's absolutely no waste. Now that this is powdered, we can go ahead and take the heat tool and we're gonna to turn that on and then we're gonna set this powder. I like to work in one area at a time to make sure that that powder turns to a beautiful silver enamel finish. You want to make sure that it's completely heat set because if it's not, it will simply rub right off. So I'm going to start at one end and as it begins to turn, which you can see here, I'll then navigate my way across the cardstock. My next step is to create banner tips on either end. And of course you can do that with your scissors, but I love this. This is the tailored tag punch, and this is gonna allow me to create perfect banner tips with ease. In addition to this wonderful design, it plays double duty here in the stamp studio just for this purpose. I've placed my cardstock down through the top, and then all I'm gonna do is just center that cardstock here so the point is in the center, and then I'll press. And that's gonna leave me a banner tip. I'm going to flip it around and I'll do the exact same thing now on this side. I've got a scrap piece of Knight of Navy cardstock here and I'm going to be using the stitched star dies and I want to create a little bit of an outline versus a solid star image. So I'm going to lay one of them here and the second one here. What I'm looking to do is to make sure that these are well aligned so I have equal space between the two stars. Once you're satisfied with the alignment, my tip for you is to go ahead and use a post-it note or a post-it flag like I have here, and then you're ready to run this through your die cutting machine. I've just finished die cutting it, and then I'm gonna disassemble it. The star that's here in the center, I actually saved to use on another card. So I'll set that aside, and that's gonna leave us this wonderful negative center image for the star on this card. These stitched star dies all come from the stitched star collection here. You can see how abundant it is. You'll see quite a few more of these on the other cards I'll be sharing with you in just a moment. I'm gonna come back to my silicone craft sheet and I'm gonna turn that stitch star upside down and I'm gonna add a tiny bit of adhesive to the wider areas of my star. I am not worried about covering the whole thing because we are gonna anchor those words over the top, just enough to tack it in place. Again, the silicone craft sheet is wonderful because the adhesive that's excess will fall here and not on my stamp table. I chose to mount my star here on an angle and I'll just tack that in place. Before I mount my greeting, I wanna add a little bit of embellishment. So I wanna bring in a little bit of silver to kind of richen up this card and bring some lively Christmas feel to it. And I'm gonna be using the silver metallic thread. It's very, very thin, it's very simple to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off. I'm choosing to wrap it around three or four of my fingers. So you'll see the tail end here and then I'm going to wrap. It is completely up to you how much that you use, and I'm gonna lay that right here down on top of the card. Remember that greeting? This is gonna do the anchoring, so I'm gonna flip that upside down. I'm grabbing my full-size dimensionals, and I'm gonna use these generously. So I've got one here on each of the ends. I'm gonna place one in the center. And with my Take Your Pick pickup tool, I'm gonna lift off those paper backings. Once I'm happy with that placement, I will go ahead and just tack that down and it's gonna hold those threads in place. I'm gonna take my scissors, I'm gonna find my end and I'm gonna give that a snip. That silver was so beautiful and subtle, so I wanted to play it up just a little bit more. So I'm bringing in the Frosted and Clear Epoxy Droplets. Now these are the clear that are part of that set, and these are the Frosted. You get both in the package. Using my Take Your Pick Pickup Tool with the Paper Piercing Tool Attachment, it's gonna help me get up underneath these because there are glue dots already on the back. And then I'm gonna place one large one here. I'm choosing to place a smaller one down here. And then I'll use one more small one up here near the greeting. 
a very pretty and simple card, but let me share the other three cards that were all part of this One Sheet Wonder. I use the exact same stitched star dies for all my cards. This piece is the top portion to this piece. This is beautiful silver foil paper, and I use some of the negative stars here for the base of the card, and I did emboss the greeting, all from the same stamp set. And then there's this one. There's that strip that we cut off the bottom when we first cut the paper. I focused on the greeting in the center, same stamp set, using the exact same dies. And this time I used the frosted epoxy droplets for this card. And then finally this one. So I used the detailed filigree stars that are all part of the stitched stars dies and embossed a different greeting and a few rhinestones on this card. I would love to know which one of these is your favorite. Would you leave me a comment below? If you have enjoyed today's video, would you please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like, it certainly helps. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.